Anytime that I repair something, I like to make it better if I can. I told you in the first part of the video that I like to add erector springs to my scope. Originally, I used an old bandsaw blade or some of this metal strap that's used to tie materials down to a pallet. While they both worked, I didn't feel like uh, either was good enough uh, to be the main spring in a scope. So I would make two lighter springs and install them on either side uh, of my original spring in the scope. One day I was running the overhead on the engine and it occurred to me that a feeler gauge uh, would make a good erector spring. With the feeler gauge you can choose uh, the thickness that you want and actually make a spring that matches your original spring. Uh, that way you would have one spring uh, for your elevation and one spring uh, for your windage. Now I'm not one to mess with success so I continue to make the two lighter springs and install them on either side of my original spring. I have a gauge that's left over from another project. I'm going to go cut this to width and I'll be right back. I use a rotary tool with a cutoff wheel to cut my gauge to width. There are three bends in the spring. The first is a short rounded bend. I'm going to use a propane torch to heat the spring and bend it. Try to keep your heat concentrated right at the end of the spring. There's the bend, and I quenched it. I did let my heat run up the gauge a little bit too much. It's not bad. The next bend is just a gradual bend that can be done without heat. This is the uh, main arc of the spring. This will be the working portion. Just back and forth, get a nice even bend. Okay, now the final bend will be in the opposite direction as the first bend, and it'll be at about a 90 degree angle. And I quench it. So there's our three bends. I'm going to cut this the length and uh, shape this end, and I'll be right back. This is not some of my best work. Seems I'm all thumbs when the camera's rolling. But I have rounded off this end, smoothed the bottom. This end needs to be smooth so it can slide along the scope tube. I've cut off the uh, downward bend and uh, it's sharp. Uh, it bites into the tube. I did get a little too much heat on this spring. The key to that is to work right in the tip of your torch flame, which I was not. Now, of course, you want to use your original spring as a pattern for this one. There's the spring at work. In part three of this video, I'll show you how to install it. 
When it comes to reticle making, you have several options. Some people choose to use hair. Others, a single strand of dental floss. You can use wire. This is an old USB cable. Or you can purchase wire that's specifically for reticle making. Now, I have a piece of PEX pipe. I'm using it to represent my reticle holder. I've attached it to the board using three brad nails. I have the electrical tape for a dark background. You position your vertical and horizontal crosshair using masking tape. You don't have to be real precise when you first tape them down because you can move uh, the crosshair around with a little screwdriver. Rotate your board, look at your reticle from all directions. That'll help you to get it centered in your reticle holder. When you're satisfied with the position, you can add tape uh, closer to your work to uh, tighten the uh, crosshairs and trial and error will tell you how much uh, is too much. Once you're satisfied with what you have, you can use your ocular lens uh, to examine your reticle uh, for both imperfections and how well you have it centered. Uh, if all is well, use super glue to uh, fasten the crosshairs to your reticle holder. Be careful not to get super glue inside the tube uh, because you'll be able to see that uh, when you look through your scope. I'll try to show you my reticle. I have added, I've made it out of hair, but I added dental floss underneath my horizontal reticle. Let me get in here. Hopefully you can see that. That gives you a comparison between hair and the dental floss. Now that I have my reticle repaired, I need to install it in the scope. In order for a scope to track properly, the reticle has to be aligned with your turrets. The vertical crosshair will be aligned with the elevation turret, the horizontal uh, with the windage turret. To do that, I've made a jig. I've just sawn a V-shape and two pieces of wood, attached them to a block. I have some nails around the side. I clamp this jig to my workbench so I can look through the scope. I use a couple of rubber bands to hold the scope in the jig. I level the scope using my elevation turret. I then side over my level and adjust my reticle. This sometimes takes several attempts. Once I'm satisfied with the position of my uh, reticle, if I have the threaded reticle holder, I put several drops of glue around the uh, reticle holder uh, to keep it in place. This scope has two screws that hold the reticle, uh, so when I have that into position, I'll use a couple drops of super glue to keep those from backing out. Now this jig serves another purpose and that is to center my erector uh, in the scope tube. I just rotate the scope in the V blocks. If there's wobble in my reticle then I use these adjustments to eliminate it. Once there's no more wobble that means my erector is in the center of the scope tube.